Hello and welcome to the NISO's 2020 Summer Readiness Briefing. My name is Zach Hutchins, Media Relations Program Lead for the New York Independent System Operator. Hopefully by now you've had time to read our press release. If not, it is available at NISO.com. A few quick housekeeping notes. Obviously, we are doing this a little differently than we have in the past, so appreciate your patience with any technical issues we may have. Also, for the benefit of everyone else on the call, please mute your line unless you're asking a question. Speaking of questions, and please save them for the end. And finally, we did want everyone to know that we are recording today's call. Presenting today's briefing is Wes Yeoman, Vice President of Operations for the New York ISO. Wes will spend the next several minutes going over this year's summer readiness. Rich Dewey, our President and CEO, is also on the phone. With that, I welcome Wes Yeoman to the mic. Wes? Uh, yeah, hello. Thank you, uh, Zachary, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I hope everyone's doing well. I actually should ask one more time, uh, that, can anybody hear me? You sound great, Wes. Okay, thank you. I've been known to speak for 20 minutes on mute and finding myself uh, repeating myself for another 20 minutes. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I think as most of you know, every spring we project summer heat wave conditions and we evaluate the expected amount of generation and uh, transmission capability infrastructure, and then produce a project, projection of forecast capacity margins for heat wave conditions, and again, for assumed performance of the existing electric energy infrastructure. Likewise, in the fall, we provide a similar assessment for uh, cold winter operations. Uh, we provide this assessment to our New York Energy Stakeholders, uh, we do that at our New York ISO Operating Committee meetings, our New York ISO Management Committee meetings, our regulators, especially uh, the New York State Reliability Council, and we're very happy to provide this to uh, any and all press agencies, and you can find this stuff on our, on our website. So, uh, uh, Zachary, uh, moving to the first slide. Okay, uh, the first slide of uh, this summer capacity assessment is utilizing a, just a deterministic approach that's in contrast to a probabilistic or an expected value approach as we use for uh, developing the installed reserve margins. But this assessment is a deterministic approach approximating uh, capacity margins and operating reserves for baseline and extreme weather conditions. Uh, we do have operating uh, requirements that each day we, we schedule for the next day enough energy and capacity to meet the next day's peak load and reserve requirements. The reserve requirement is the extra amount that we schedule and commit to be sure we have enough energy in case we have some bad luck and a big uh, a unit or a couple big units trip offline. In the second bullet uh, at baseline peak weather conditions. So this would be um, what we're projecting for typical heat wave weather conditions this summer, and, and we have the parts uh, of this analysis on the next page. We're projecting 1,721 megawatts of capacity margin surplus, um, which is a decrease of about 506 megawatts over the baseline of uh, forecast from last year. So we're projecting a surplus amount of capacity and energy uh, of 1,721 megawatts for this summer over typical heat wave conditions. Uh, and this, this um, is the amount of capacity above the baseline peak forecast and above the 2,620 megawatts of extra operating reserves that we commit every day. Now, for very extreme heat wave conditions, uh, one term is 90th percentile. Another way of saying that is maybe once in a decade type heat wave conditions, uh, uh, we would have higher electric peak loads at those extreme conditions. And we're just projecting a very short, uh, small amount of capacity um, uh, shortfall of 193 megawatts, but um, that can, we believe, easily be made up in our energy markets. Not to mention that that value assumes some uh, expected unavailability of the generating fleet, and who knows, for actual conditions, uh, well, we may not have many uh, units unavailable. Uh, and we're very confident that we can uh, call upon our energy, our, our emergency operating procedures, and uh, come up with at least three or four thousand megawatts of additional relief. So that's not really uh, problematic. So the next slide. 
Okay, so here's our uh, capacity analysis. Uh, the best way to look at this is to um, jump right to the third column. Uh, the first two columns are a review of our forecasted uh, values last spring going into last summer, but the third column is our baseline projection going into this summer. As you can see on the top, we have three categories of capacity resources. We have uh, in the first line generating capacity, so that's New York State generating capacity that we believe uh, is uh, available for this summer. The second line is our SCR program, which is really our demand response program, where we have um, customers signed up as capacity suppliers and that they can reduce their usage uh, in during heat wave conditions at our request. And then the net of our external purchases and sales. So this would be our uh, uh, purchase and sales with Hydro-Quebec, Ontario, the PJM uh, RTO, and the uh, New England ISO. Now on the first line, the 38,475 megawatts of uh, expected generation this summer, you can see that that is lower than last uh, summer's projection, where if you go to the first column, the 39,295, and I won't read all the differences, but there are a couple large differences that I will call out and bring to your attention. First of all, the, the Cayuga Unit 1 coal plant uh, just north of Ithaca, retired in the last 12 months. The Somerset Coal Plant, uh, west of Rochester, New York, which was good for 655 megawatts, uh, retired uh, actually in the last couple months. Uh, Indian Point 2 Nuclear Power Plant at, at 1,299 megawatts, that also retired on April 30th. So we had those retirements, but we also had a an additional uh, large combined cycle come online a month ago that's referred to as Cricket Valley down in um, uh, southeastern New York, and that's good for 1,020. So if you net those four changes along with some small changes, we end up uh, projecting 38,475 megawatts of New York State generating capacity. And then you add into that the demand response, you add into that the net of the external capacity purchases and sales, and we come up with 41,319 megawatts of capacity that's available to the New York ISO to meet low. That's a, that's a pretty big number. Now then we say from a practical perspective, uh, everything won't go perfect, and we may have some generator D rates, we might have a couple outages, so in footnote two, we, we reflect upon um, 60 months of uh, performance in history, and we estimate what might be some uh, wind farm D rates, some hydro D rates, and some fossil generation D rates. And, and we project about 4,682 megawatts. Now, when we really experience our actual peak this summer, it might be in July, it might be in August, uh, it's, it's hard to know. That, I mean, that number may be quite a bit different than the 4,682, but reflecting on 60 months of history, uh, that's what our evaluation came up with. So we subtract that from the 41,319 to get from a practical perspective an expected 36,637 megawatts capacity resources. And again, well, whenever we experience our peak this summer, uh, it could be higher than that or it could be lower based on the outages. But anyways, then the, the next line is the peak load forecast. For this summer, we're projecting a peak load, a summer heat wave peak load of 32,296 megawatts. That's about 86 megawatts lower than last year's forecast heat wave uh, peak. The reason it's a little lower is the, um, the impacts of uh, energy conservation programs and energy efficiency programs. Then, uh, as I said on the earlier slide, we need to commit extra energy and capacity to be able to make up for uh, any units to trip off the next day. And every day we commit an additional 2,620 megawatts of operating reserves. That's just extra contingency uh, energy and capacity that we have uh, in case a generator trips off. So if we sum those two numbers, kind of our, our capacity requirement is 34,916. At least that's what we would expect in a heat wave. It's, it's not that high on a day like today or tomorrow or yesterday, but for heat wave conditions, that's the requirement that we would need. We compare that to the net capacity resources and we get 1,721 megawatts of excess or surplus above and beyond the heat wave peak load and above and beyond the added reserve requirements. 
Now, the fourth column is the same exact analysis using the same exact numbers, except one number changes, and that's the peak load forecast, which is kind of indicated on, uh, is indicated on line four. And if that's for the extreme once in a decade type heat wave, and that value says the electric peak would probably be about 1900, um, at 1900 megawatts higher than what we're uh, expecting for 50 50 conditions. And if that were to occur, and if we measured a, an expected uh, extreme heat wave electric peak of 34,210, our capacity uh, margin would be a little bit negative. But again, we're confident the energy market can make that up, scheduling power from New England or Ontario or Quebec and PJM. Or um, maybe we don't have 4,600 megawatts of D rates, and we're confident in our emergency procedures uh, to be able to come up with, it, with uh, at least three or 4,000 megawatts. Okay, the next slide, Zachary. Okay, now a few words on um, the COVID-19 impacts and response, uh, really starting in maybe the first or second week of March through, uh, really through uh, uh, current or through uh, today, we are seeing about an 8 to 10% drop in electricity demand throughout the New York State. Um, now, it's a little different every hour. Uh, the amount of, of, of reduction we see at maybe 7 o'clock in the morning is different than what we see at 3 o'clock, uh, 3 a.m., and what you might see in uh, western New York might be different than Long Island and New York City. But on average, across all hours, across all regions of New York State, we're seeing about an 8 to 10% drop. Uh, now, that is not materially impacting our summer peak load projections that we had on the previous slide. We're still uh, for heat wave conditions. We do believe uh, most or all of those air conditioners will still come on. And it's awfully hard to know when we get to July and August and have a significant heat wave, what phase New York State will be in um, in the COVID-19 uh, release for society. I mean, most of the state, I think, is in phase one now. Parts of the state are probably getting close to phase two. I don't know if we'll be in phase three or four. But nonetheless, um, it's hard to project where um, industry will be in New York State and uh, what amount of air conditioners will come on. But at this point, we're, we're projecting this, the 32,000 number that you saw on the previous slide. Now, throughout the crisis, the ISO has been in constant communication with the transmission owners, which are really the big utilities, uh, National Grid, NYSEC, Con Edison, and, uh, and the generator owners. Uh, back in March, we were actually talking to the TOs every single day to understand what impacts uh, the COVID-19 might have on uh, the capability of the transmission system, what maintenance do they still need to get done this spring to make sure the transmission system works well this summer. The same with the generators uh, in the spring is when they do a lot of maintenance, and we really wanted to just communicate with the generator owners to understand what issues they were having, what problems, what might be impactful to uh, providing capability this summer, and really the net of an awful lot of uh, communications and coordination is that neither the uh, utilities nor the generators are projecting any um, operating problems this summer. So that's great news. Uh, they were all able to complete their critical maintenance to assure that the, their infrastructure performed well this summer, and then maybe some non-essential type work has been rescheduled to next fall or next year. So uh, we're very satisfied that uh, the New York State infrastructure is going to work well this summer, um, and, and we appreciate the efforts from the utilities and the generator owners. Um, this is Zach Hutchins. I want to thank Wes Yeomans and Rich Dewey for their participation and everyone else for joining today. Wish you all a healthy and happy summer. Thank you, everyone.